I'm using a surface mount 3.3 uh, volt regulator here. Uh, just about anyone will do that will uh, handle half an amp or better of current. Mounting this on the underside of the board also allows me to take advantage of the little bus structure of the uh, Radio Shack um, breadboard layout. Just to keep myself from getting confused, I also uh, took a marker and marked the uh, silkscreen side of the board with the plus minus and voltage input markings uh, so that I wouldn't get confused when we're working from the top. Here I'm attaching the battery leads, red for uh, voltage input, this is 6 volts, and uh, notice the black wire going to the ground bus. You can't beat using uh, one of those little hands-free uh, devices with the uh, alligator clips to help hold wires in place. Uh, notice how it's uh, clamping the red wire uh, in place. Here I'm attaching the main power wires. Uh, red is uh, 6 volts input and black going to the uh, horizontal ground bus is uh, ground. Looking at the underside you can see the ground wire poking through. I've already soldered the red wire up top so we're going to solder the ground wire into the ground bus uh, that you see right there uh, on the uh, left hand side of the voltage regulator. But before we do that, we want to add a capacitor at the same time. It's a good idea to have a, an output uh, capacitance on, on just for some filtering. And I'm using a 10 microfarad 35 volt uh, DC capacitor here. Uh, nothing special about it, but it's one I had. And you notice the leads and particularly the polarity. The uh, negative stripe needs to go into the uh, negative bus there. So uh, you need to make sure that that's uh, correct polarity. Uh, and uh, we'll go ahead and put the capacitor down uh, flush now and uh, then flip the board back over. If you don't get that polarity right, uh, these little capacitors can actually pop like firecrackers if you put the wrong voltage on them. So you want to make sure you get the polarity right. And you see the capacitor leads sticking through here. Both have been soldered. And I'm actually going to leave those leads on with, uh, before I, uh, for a little bit before I clip them off because they'll make a handy uh, a point to attach some clip leads for voltage checks. You want to make a voltage check at this point because everything runs off 3.3 volts. And you want to make sure your regulator output's uh, giving you that 3.3 volts so that you wired everything upright. So... Uh, you don't let the smoke out otherwise if you get the wrong voltage. The heart of the Wi-Fi system is this uh, roving networks Wi-Fi uh, RN131G. Uh, the 121, which is what I ordered here, is actually the through-hole uh, board-mounted version. It makes it easier to solder. Uh, so you want the 121. Probably the trickiest part of the whole assembly was actually attaching the... Uh, necessary connections to the through hole uh, module and they're really only um, five you got the red 3.3 um, volt wire you got the green wire that I attached to the uh, ad hoc jumper pin uh, it's GPIO 9 you've got the ground wire uh, in the upper uh, left there that you see attached and you've got two 10k resistors for the transmit and receive pins uh, if you attach those five things, that's all you need to attach to the uh, roving networks module. To mount the roving networks module to the Radio Shack uh, breadboard, I use these little cork spacers uh, to uh, make room for the uh, chips that are on the underside. And uh, they just have some adhesive on them as well as uh, I use some hot glue uh, to actually uh, attach it to the Radio Shack board and that worked very very well. Uh, what you'll see in this next picture coming up is uh, how the cork provides uh, some spacing to allow for clearance for the components that are on the underside of the Wi-Fi module. And uh, you know use whatever mounting method, method uh, 
uh, suit you. Uh, there's really nothing critical here. The next somewhat tricky uh, part was actually mounting connections to the GPS and I followed SparkFun's recommendations in the tutorial they have on their site for this and that uses a header uh, and you just tack it onto the pins and it makes a neat package. Uh, it also allows you to plug and unplug the GPS and potentially if you want to experiment with the different GPS modules uh, it makes it very easy to use the basic Wi-Fi setup to do that by unplugging and plugging in different ones. In the midst of uh, my project, it began to snow here in North Carolina, so it uh, looks like uh, we're going to have a white Christmas, or at least a white December after all. Anyway, I uh, thought I'd uh, share the view out my window. Here's a little bit of uh, extra detail, uh, close up of the uh, red power wire attached to the uh, 121 um, Wi-Fi module breakout board. Uh, you'll see, uh, notice the green wire there attached to the jumper and the 1K resistor uh, which actually goes back uh, to um, the positive 3.3 voltage uh, right below the jumper there near the capacitor. There's a jumper tying that into the, the voltage bus. Anyway, that's so uh, you can put a jumper there and boot the unit up in uh, ad hoc mode. Uh, if you don't have that jumper present, uh, then it uh, comes up in infrastructure mode. Uh, and most of the time when you're out in the field, you're going to want an ad hoc uh, direct uh, to your uh, iPad connection so you have the jumper in place. But uh, that's how I uh, fabricated this, and I just wanted to give you a little extra detail there for uh, that uh, connection. Now this is a view of the uh, jumper uh, from the other side of the board to give you a little bit uh, um, different perspective on the uh, jumper connections. Nothing critical here. There are only four connections to make to connect to the GPS and two of them are shown here. I'm picking up the other end of the 10K resistors for transmit and receive signals. Uh, to the uh, Wi-Fi. If you've got sharp eyes you'll notice there are five pins from the GPS. Uh, it's actually a six pin header. Uh, the GPS pins are ground, ground, uh, the transmit and receive pins and, and VCC. And so I'm basically offset uh, into the uh, six pin connector. Again you need to consult uh, your particular GPS's documentation. Uh, this is the little uh, LS20031, uh, but uh, I rather than try to cut off the sixth pin on the header, I just decided to offset it. And so in my particular installation, the left three pins on the uh, right angle header that's attached to the Radio Shack board are all ground. And then it's the transmit and receive in, in, the, in the VCC. So... Um, Again, you'll need to uh, uh, adjust accordingly for your connections, but this worked out pretty well for me. Here's another uh, look at the underside of the uh, LS20031, and according to the uh, documentation, the uh, pins are from left to right uh, in this view are VCC, receive, transmit, and two grounds. And here you see uh, an underside shot of the uh, entire GPS assembly uh, as uh, it is complete. Let's go ahead and attach the battery and you'll notice the little LED flash on the end of the GPS and the polling LEDs uh, on the Wi-Fi will uh, come alive. There we go. We saw the uh, GPS flash, and we're getting the green uh, polling signal, and when the yellow uh, flash indicates that the GPS is in fact uh, feeding data via Wi-Fi. And to check that out, let's go back over here to the laptop, and we'll fire up a terminal session. And taking a look at that. We'll zoom in here a little bit. We'll pull up the address. This happens to be the address and port that I gave it on my local network. And there you go. GPS data. 
These are NMEA strings. Of course, I don't have a GPS lock uh, yet down here in the, the basement. So we're not seeing the latitude and longitude coordinates, but as you can see, the numbers are changing. So we actually have a working Wi-Fi GPS. Wow, I didn't expect to get uh, readings down here in the basement uh, below my um, all the roof of my uh, uh, split-level ranch home here. I'm down in the basement where I do my projects. But as you can see, the uh, GPS module is flashing, meaning that it's actually getting GPS data. Uh, it's just sitting here next to a window. Uh, but I'm down in the, in the basement, actually, at uh, ground level. And if we come back over here to the computer and pull up the GPS data, there we go. And as you can see, zooming in on it, we're actually getting GPS data. Isn't that fascinating? I'm loving it. So, enjoy.